live from Madrid, Spain. It's the Cube covering HPE Discover Madrid 2017. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Welcome back to Madrid, everybody. This is the Cube, the leader in live tech coverage, and this is day one of HPE Discover Madrid, the European version of the show that we cover in Las Vegas in the spring. My name is Dave Vellante. I'm here with my co-host. Peter Burris, Bill Philbin is here, he's the general manager of the storage business unit, and he's joined by Eugene Dupre, who's the director of systems engineering at the Fox Group. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. Bill, it's always a pleasure. Um, I see you more, more than I see my wife sometimes, <laughs> I think. Yeah, you know, the last time we spoke, we <laughs> talked about merit badges, do you remember? I just, it just came into my mind, <laughs> which is that seven or eight years in a row, I thought I'd get a badge or you know, <laughs> something to you know, offset my my element here on my on my lapel. But yeah, well, you're. you're I, I'm still waiting for. I'm still waiting for. You're it. there in terms of uh, <laughs> one of our most popular cube alums. So yeah. thanks again for coming back my on. My pleasure. Well, give us the update on 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 the event. We did some deep dives in Boston recently, uh -huh. so That's right. we got a good Kool Aid injection from you guys. Yeah. And, uh, so we're here at the show. What are you guys talking about? Well, you know, uh, the, the, the wonders of the storage market continue, the transformation continues, right? We were here six months ago, and we were talking about, so at that point, the nimble, nimble acquisition, now six months into that, we continue to see sort of the business transform itself. There's really three things we're talking here, here at the show. One is, uh, we're talking about InfoSight, uh, but InfoSight in a much broader sense, not sort of solely limited to nimble, but InfoSight for three par, but more broadly, Infosite as a basis for uh, AI in the data center. And so you think about you know, uh, sort of the experience our customers are looking at from on-prem versus off-prem models. They're, they're having to look at things like you know, cost of delivery, ROI, et cetera. And Infosite is much broader than just sort of improving the support model. It's all about how do we sort of take the on-prem experience and make it such that it's actually self-managing and self-healing. And that's where we're headed with Infosite, not only in storage, but also across the whole, um, the whole data center, and that was number one. Number two, we're focused on uh, cloud ready. You know, as customers are having to make this sort of decisions about what's on-prem versus off-prem, you and I were talking about right. this over dinner last night. How do we easily facilitate that? And so the whole message from Hewlett Packard around hybrid IT is, is compute and data where you want, what's relevant to your organization. And then number three, as customers are looking at uh, consumption-based models, they want the, you know, as they move data, they also want to change the way they consume uh, storage, right, or, or consume uh, data center assets. So CapEx and flexible OpEx models that um, parallel what they're seeing in, um, in web-based properties. So it's, it's all about you know, uh, choice, it's all about giving them the same experience that they'd see uh, in a web-based property, but not without some of the downsides of data sovereignty, SLAs, data integrity, and and sort of other, other issues. My friend here, Eugene at, at, at Fox, is a big supporter of, of storage, so Hewlett Packard storage, and so I thought it would be interesting to sort of get not only what the vendor's view of the world is, but you know, let's hear it from a guy who's actually got the real life uh, you know, problem of deciding, okay, what's inside, what's outside a house, how does he consume our stuff differently? So that was the yeah. rationale for bringing Eugene along today. Well, we love to talk That's to cool. customers. Eugene, let's hear, hear it from you. Well, first, help, help us understand your role at, at Fox, um, and maybe let's get into some of the business drivers and how those trickle into IT. Sure, so my position is a director on the architecture and engineering team, and our responsibility is delivering services, if you will, the idea of delivering a technology stack of servers or network or storage is blurred, and now it's delivering a service. People are not reaching out for this many CPUs or this type of disk or this many spindles anymore. They know what they need to do from a business perspective, and it's our job to translate those business requirements to system requirements that we can then deliver a service with. So what are the big drivers in, in, your, in your business? Um, and, and how are they, I mean, you sort of described how they're affecting IT, but what are the big drivers? So, uh, entertainment is morphing dramatically, mm -hmm. and, and of course, Fox is a leader in the entertainment industry. And, um, you know, competition is coming from new avenues, and the way people consume media is changing dramatically. And we need to adjust to all of those types of requirements, whether it's new ideas in production, or new media plan platforms for distribution. So, Obviously part of that is you know, speed, agility, time to market, flexibility, getting new products out faster. How, 
How do you hide the complexity of your infrastructure generally, maybe storage specifically, you know, from sort of the, the business? How do you make it not an inhibitor? So, um, historically people would, would uh, actually buy their own components, right? They would be responsible for a, mm. a capital budget tied to a project to acquire X number of spindles. and X, um, That's gone, that's gone. People are now are more concerned about throughput requirements, of, but it's not along the lines of how many gigabytes per second, it's I need 4K, we're going to use 4K uh, transcoding, I need to have eight people to be able to view this simultaneously, and that's what they want. So they don't want to know about the complexities of what's behind the, the mask, if you will, or behind the curtain. So, so it's more of a shared services model, and you're, you're, you're trying to sort of deploy exactly. a shared services capability that's capable of scaling you know, to meet the demands of, uh, of your consumers, right? E exactly, and productions yeah. don't, don't want to own their own hardware anymore. They, they, they want uh, an operational model where they have uh, some cost associated with how, what their consumption is for the duration of their production. And um, from Fox's perspective, if we do this from a shared services, centralized um, delivery model, then there's efficiencies and cost in it for that delivery, and there's immediacy. As soon as they need it, it's available. So in many respects, we use an architectural parlance, you are creating the business capability architecturally that is facilitating the process of creating the digital assets that make Fox money right. and make Fox profitable. Exactly. So And doing so in a way that the customer is not exposed to the underlying transaction costs associated with different infrastructure options. Is that kind of where you're going with this? Exactly, exactly. So uh, the, the productions can worry more about what they do, which is creation, right, and creativity, and less about what is underneath it that's, that's enabling the, the storage and distribution of that media that they're creating. So but the, but the, uh, the, right. the, the whole media business, as you've articulated, is going through a significant amount of change, but there is still a need to capture activity or capture things where it's happening. Oh, so, absolutely. so talk a little bit about how the relationship between storage and network, file size, file security, uh, the ability to create an asset at the moment that it's being generated as opposed to a couple days later when it's being rendered. How is that all coming together uh, so the data is dictating the model that you use to actually make all this happen? So we actually have mobile setups that are associated with, say, motion capture stage. And then that has to be centralized. The, the transcoding will happen at Fox Media Services. And then, um, and then distribution from the Fox Media Cloud. So all of these different units have to be coordinated such that the data has an even flow from the capturing on the stage to the transcoding and the editing to the final transcoding for the completed media for distribution and then off to the distributors of the content. Can you talk a little bit about, let's dig more into the operating model. When you go back and look at your career, you, you know, 10, 15 years ago, you had to get down and dirty. Um, you're, you're doing sort of unnatural acts to make infrastructure work. Um, you know, Fox, I'm sure, doesn't want to invest in that kind of heavy lifting. It wants to transform its business. Sure. How has the role of an infrastructure professional changed over the last five or, or 10 years? Well, so, you know, we used to, we used to have issues where um, we would say, well, our, as, as hardware aged, the OPEX would go up, and that would become a challenge. And they say, well, drive down the OPEX. <laughs> so we would buy new hardware to drive down the OPEX, and then that would drive up CAPEX. <laughs> and, now, and now we're coming back around to, let's, let's get away from this CAPEX model and get more towards a, an OPEX type model. And um, so leveraging things like cloud storage, and, and that flexibility to burst outward if, we, uh, if our on-premise is, is insufficient, and, and designing an infrastructure that is not dedicated to a specific project or specific need, but more um, general to uh, performance level. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, this is where we're headed now. And uh, but as you, as, you, uh, as you look back, you, uh, someone in your role, or someone like your right. role, was responsible for making sure that the hardware assets were productive and taken care of, and now it sounds like you're more focused on making sure the data right. assets are generating yeah. return for the business. That right. has an impact on your relationship to your key suppliers like HPE. Sure. 
First off, have I got the right that you're moving from a hardware focus to a data focus as you generate a return for the business? And secondly, how is that impacting some of those strategic relationships with some of your key suppliers? Well, so as, as we uh, talked to Bill uh, and we were talking the previous evening, um, we still are buying assets. And we still have hard assets that are available locally, but we need to also be able to branch out. And, and this was one of the things that, you know, everybody talked about cloud and let's get to the cloud and move things to the cloud. And, and we looked at like the gateway devices that were available and um, they seemed cumbersome. Uh, they were proprietary in nature. They, they used the term optimizing my data. But, but what that translated to was making it, storing it in a proprietary format that only they understood. And, and we didn't want to get locked into this gateway or that gateway, and we were really looking to our, right. our, our vendor partners to, to say, how do we integrate these new storage capabilities, these new compute platforms into our infrastructure that we have, our hard assets that we have on premise. And, um, and that's why we're very excited about these new capabilities that we're rolling into the, the store once, and we're looking you know, to continue to expand that capability with our partners and making those things innate to the storage platforms that we purchase. So, so what specifically does HPE do to support that, that operating model? I mean, is it you know, the way it prices? Um, is it the services? I wonder if we could unpack that a little bit. Sure, sure. Do you so, want to talk a little bit about sort of, you know, your version of archiving versus backup and what's going to be projected into the cloud versus what's in the data center and how does CloudBank sort of support those, so support we're, that? Well, we're very excited about CloudBank. Right, one of, our, one of the challenges that we have with, with backups is you have to have on-premise and off-premise copies. And if I'm doing all of this within store once, now I'm, I'm putting up two hard assets, um, I'm using dedicated circuits to connect between these assets, and, and, um, and our consumption rate is doubled, if you will, right? It's expensive. It's expensive. Yeah. So, so um, and then we're looking to the, the, the hardware vendor who's profiting from this expense to say, how do I drive this down, right? How do you make less money? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a good analogy. <laughs> Mrs. Philbin's not very happy with this, with this whole problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can see, I mean, this, it's almost a conflict of interest for our partners, mm -hmm. yeah. except for that, you know, I don't call them a vendor, I call them a partner. And we have a shared success model, right? I need to uh, make sure that Fox has the capabilities that it stays competitive in the marketplace that it competes in. And I need to work with the vendor to provide that solution at a, in a cost-effective way. And um, if, if Bill and HPE's interest is only in themselves and only in selling me hardware, well then they're not my partner, right? So we, uh, we, we meet and we, uh, we meet with engineers and we talk about next generation capabilities and the things that are driving our business requirements and our business model. And, um, and HPE's been very generous to allow us early access to the, the different capabilities, including Todd Right, which then allow us to, de to develop and deliver that service that is necessary for Fox to be successful. So, so you have to figure out, okay, how can I still invest in R&D and That's fund right. my operation well, and compete? So, so customers are going to go to, the, uh, go to the cloud as we were talking about. Data used to have gravity, right? And now data and compute need to sort of come together and customers want the ability to sort of move data to where they see the, 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 you know, the, the need arise. Not encumbered by the infrastructure. Not encumbered by the infrastructure, and it's now also not a bursting-based model which occasionally I need to go to the web. No, there's, there's assets that are perfectly acceptable to sort of be deposited in the web, you know, sort of, you know, ad, ad nauseum or ad infinitum, right, you know, for permanently, right? And the way that you're looking at it is, how do I sort of take a, an infrastructure copy that used to be in my data center, assuming, you know, power and, and, and heat and cooling, right, and how do I sort of take a copy of that and make that uh, available, uh, but put it on a, a platform which is cost effective? Exactly. And without, without though, however, the sort of the huge operational running cost of knowing where that data is residing. So it's, you know, how do, how do I make it operationally efficient, cost efficient from a storage perspective, and have it be reliable and, but, and available? But right. also create new options for the business. That's right. Because that's how, certainly in a media company, that's how a media company is going to make more money, right. is by putting in place infrastructure that creates new revenue options because you have a way of facilitating sharing in a secure manner that uh, diminishes the invasiveness of the underlying infrastructure. That's right. Exactly. So I think the way I think you think yeah. about it, it's all about choice. 
I mean, if, if Eugene decides that he wants to store asset X, Y, and Z in the cloud and he wants to store asset one, two, three inside of his data center, our obligation is to enable that transformation for him and recognizing that the better that we do that, the better partnership we're going to have and the better way that we're going to sort of move our businesses forward, uh, forward together. And between Fox and Hewlett Packard, we have a rich history of partnering uh, when HP was was in the PC and printer in the printer business, and that's transformed now into H, the HP Enterprise. And so, I think this is. I think you said it right. There's a difference between a vendor right. and a partner. And a partner, right? Exactly. A partner's there in the good times and in the bad times, right? Uh, who you know, who's there to help you with your transformation, isn't only in it for themselves. And I think that's sort of, if I can sort of think about our relationship, that's that's what it is, right? And that's exactly where we're at with HPE, is a, is a true partnership, right? Where we, uh, where we share in each other's success and um, they understand what our business requirements are and how they're changing and they're incorporating those requirements into the development of the next generation of the product. And we're very fortunate then to um, be able to get early access to those products and those offerings so that we can co-develop them and, um, and resolve issues that arise and, and perfect the, the product as it, as it matures. So Bill, I want to end on the, the storage business, yeah. the business that you, you run, and, and uh, you've got an engineering background. Um, you're now the, the leader of this business, which is com com comprises a component of hybrid IT, you, the new reporting structure yeah. that we're going to see in the future. But one of my takeaways from Andover, we had a deep dive in Andover yeah. uh, a couple months ago, was that you guys are in pretty good shape in the following. I'll summarize it and I'd love you to chime in. Um, you're gaining <coughs> share. Um, you basically have to hold serve with 3PAR. 3PAR was, to me, was the savior you know, years ago. That's right. Came in and really affected. It was a gift that kept on giving. But you could only go to that well so many times. You've now made a couple of key acquisitions in the form of, of, of Nimble. Simplivity. Uh, where you get Infosight, Simplivity. That's right. So you're, you've got to basically hold serve with 3PAR. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got growth opportunities with both of those assets that we just, just right. mentioned. So maybe, you know, that was kind of my takeaway. It was, wow really came into focus a little bit. How do you sort of look at your, your opportunity going forward? Well, so I mean, the, way, the best way to think about it is, you know, when I joined Hewlett Packard now almost eight years ago, we were probably six or seven in the storage business. Today, we're sort of on the cusp of sort of being number two, you know, neck and neck with, uh, with NetApp. So I think the growth has been tremendous. Second, that growth has been on organic as well as inorganic options. You know, store once is a good example right. of organic option we built. Inorganic, uh, you know, one can, can't argue about the success of 3PAR. Mm -hmm. Right, it's the number one mid-range brand of the world. Nimble brings with it a flair of sort of next generation storage capability with Infosite across the top. Infosite now deployed on three par means that we can start talking a much broader message about how we transform our customers' ability to sort of run their businesses differently. So I think that's, I think that's important. And then when you look at SimpliVity, you know, the, the, the focus around hyperconverge and how, how we sort of um, offer customer solutions there. I think if you, if you take a look at the broad breadth of the portfolio, if you're an independent storage company with one thing to sort of shuck to the street, you're going to have a problem. If you're an independent storage company without a connection to the rest of the data center with compute and networking, we think you're going to have a problem. If you don't have sort of the broad orchestration sort of story around like Synergy or OneView or Newstack or other things that HP is now talking about, we think you're going to think you're going to have a problem. And so, you know, storage in a sort of a Ptolemaic sort of viewpoint, right, which is we think everything revolves around us, is uniquely positioned to actually help our customers transform, but it comes down to choice without operational complexity, with a breadth of the portfolio that allows a customer to make the right choices of on-prem, off-prem, hardware, software-defined, uh, hyper-converged, today converged, and in the future. Today and right. in the future. So, we think that uh, Hewlett Packard Storage is actually in a tremendous position to sort of help our customers like Eugene and others out there to run their businesses effectively. Well guys, thanks for coming yeah. to theCUBE, Eugene. We always love to have the customer perspective, so Bill, thanks for it's good seeing you guys. having him come with you. And I'm, I'm looking good. for year number uh, eight or nine, so <laughs> you know, if you're out there, buy some more storage so I can keep coming back <laughs> and seeing Dave. Good, and, there uh, you go. and they'll partner with you. Too. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, right? Jets, really appreciate it. Okay. Uh, all right, keep thanks. it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this short break. This is theCUBE, we're live from Madrid, HPE Discover 2017.